the environment is essential to supporting human well-being and that actually if you just leave things to the free market you might not come out with the ideal solution both in terms of the sustainability of the environment and the well-being of the population. And it was particularly uh, energised by a report um, uh, by the Millennium Ecosystem Assess uh, Assessment um, which popularised this approach called the Ecosystem Services Approach, which in essence is actually very simple. It says that the environment is a complex set of processes which delivers services which help produce human well-being. Not on their own, typically uh, you have to have other inputs, manufactured capital, human capital, that sort of stuff, but together these ecosystem services and these other inputs produce the goods and services that actually affect human well-being. And there was a concern about whether we were really managing the environment in the right way. And so the government decided to um, undertake, in a way, its own Millennium E-System service but just assessment, but just for the UK. And it did this by, first of all, bringing together a big team of natural scientists and then complementing this with a team of economists and uh, other social scientists. Um, the natural scientists did a fantastic job of looking at the trends in the, those ecosystem services. What's happening, for example, in terms of the quantity and quality of water, uh, the atmosphere, uh, obviously the climate is a big one, biodiversity, all these sort of things. And that provided the quantitative information that we then need to undertake uh, economic um, assessment and, and valuation. And that, of course, feeds directly to decision-making. We looked at a whole set of um, goods that are related to ecosystem services. Lots and lots of different goods. Um, obviously, you start off with simple things like agricultural goods and that sort of stuff. But then you think about more complex services, like the role that the environment plays in cleaning up pollution. Um, or the way that uh, the environment uh, delivers uh, quality and quantity of water, that, that sort of thing. What we were trying to do from an economic point of view is estimate what's called marginal values. And marginal values are the value of a, uh, a one unit change in those ecosystem services. So what is the value of um, improving water quality by a particular unit or um, even what is the unit or uh, the value of, uh, of increasing woodlands by uh, a certain unit, okay? Once you've estimated those marginal values in a robust way, you can then begin to value changes in those services because you've basically got a unit value and you know how many units things are changing by, so you've got the overall change value. We looked at that in the past, uh, we looked at what's happened since about the middle of the last century up to the present day, about 60 years, but we also wanted to look into the future. And in conjunction with um, a, a variety of experts from different fields, natural and social science, policy makers as well, we came up with a set of scenarios of change into the future, and then we could attempt to value some of the uh, changes that, that happened under these various uh, scenarios. But if I can illustrate it with two um, uh, antithesis uh, examples. So one scenario was a case where we try and um, reduce or even completely remove environmental regulation so as to maximise the market value of, uh, for example, agricultural uh, output. And contrast that with um, another scenario where uh, we maintain environmental regulation um, and we attempt to maximise a mix of both market and uh, non-market values. Now, uh, what you find in, in the first case is, yes, obviously, if you uh, reduce all regulation, you can increase market values fairly substantially by uh, actually several hundred million pounds across the whole of a, um, a country like uh, the UK. However, that comes at a really big cost in terms of all those non-market, what economists call external 
uh, uh, benefits and costs. So, for example, you can increase agricultural uh, outputs at the cost of increasing uh, water pollution, increasing greenhouse gas emissions, decreasing uh, access to recreation, um, hammering biodiversity, all those sort of things. And from a market point of view, it looks like a pretty good result. But if you look at all the values, actually you're imposing a major cost upon UK PLC, if you like. If you contrast that with uh, the antithesis of that, where we say, well, we're not going to we're not going to hammer agriculture. However, we are also going to look at uh, the possibilities of changing various aspects of land use where we can have major gains in terms of these uh, externalities. And indeed, what you find is that you can. There are, there are alternative futures in which actually we can very much increase the sum of these market and non-market values through fairly modest changes um, to, for example, uh, uh, land use.